We asked Steve Rothery of Marillion if he was a little panicked when their original lead singer, Fish, left the band. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music. Well, I know you're a big Genesis fan, and I know that you've been compared to Genesis, but you guys did what ha- went through what Genesis went through. You lost your lead singer. He wasn't in the back on the drum kit in this case. Mm-hmm. Um, was was When Fish left, I mean, was what was your first impression of going, did you go, what, what the hell? Because every band goes, what the hell are we going to do? Not really, because we'd already written quite a lot of music um, that finished up being on Season's End and even some parts of Hollywood and Eden. So... Um, you know, there was a confidence in our musical strength still. We just had to find the right person. You know, we didn't want to find a clone of fish. We wanted to find someone who was interesting in a different way. And it took a long time. We auditioned a lot of people, listened to a lot of cassette tapes. But eventually, yeah, we, we came across Steve Hargath. Is there anybody we'd know that you auditioned? Not really. No, I mean, you know, just some some of the guys were sure like general rock vocalist types who just were in a very different area of music. There were some singers from the younger prog bands, some of whom really desperately wanted to be fish. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, it's completely not appropriate at all for what, for what we were trying to do. Well, you talked to a, a good friend of mine, Eamon O'Neill. I've never met him from Eon Music, uh, uh, I think a few months ago. And, and you, he had asked you about about, you know, coming up with these inventive parts, you know, of like, and you had responded and said, well, you don't, not sure where they come from, but you, you just, I mean, they just, I mean, you don't stay, you don't wake up at night and think of a guitar part. You don't like go, Hey, that'd be good. That, Cause no. you're so unique in that way. You've got, you come at me with your, with your guitar. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but you come at, sometimes I'm going, where did he come up? He's like <laughs> Batman. Where did he come up with this stuff? Yeah, well, I honestly have no idea because all I can say is that um, when I pick up a guitar and start playing, I have no idea what I'm going to play next. So uh, you just try and do something that isn't obvious. You know, there's so much being already done on the guitar and there's millions, literally millions of guitarists around the world playing the same licks, you know, and uh, the guitar can, can be so much more than that. It's just, you just need to approach it in a kind of fresh way you know and 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 deliberately try not to fall into cliches and try and find you know it's all there it's all hiding you know it's all hiding within the chords the melodies the way you can you can you can find melodies within chords and and you know there's something beautifully random about the guitar that if uh, if you come at it in the right way you can just even now come up with fresh and interesting things like care, for instance, the last track. I listen to the guitar part. I'm going, what the? Yeah, like holy <laughs> snapping turtles. That's what made. I, I, I mean, I'm listening to the whole album. I love your work. I'm, you know, I'm interviewing you, so I'm really paying attention. And I listen to that. And I'm going, where did he? That is so beautiful. That just moved me. Oh, thank you, thank you. It is a, it's a, it's a beautiful track. I mean, I think, especially the, the end section with the choirs. It, um, I mean, it brought a tear to my, to my eye the first time I heard that because when you make a record like this, you know, you don't get to hear all the details until you come to mix it. So, uh, you know, I knew we'd, we were trying this choir, but I hadn't heard what the result was. But then when you hear everything in context uh, and it's just so incredibly moving and so emotional. Um, so, yeah, it, it's a very special, very special moment for me. I don't know your family life, but did your parents get to see your success? Were they still around? Did they, the... uh, yeah, well, it was my mom that brought me up and, and she was kind of my biggest fan, really. So, yeah, she came to um, to a lot of the shows. Um, she sort of died, I don't know, how many years ago now? Maybe eight years ago, just before my solo album came out, The Ghost of Pripyat. Um, but, yeah, she was always my my greatest supporter. That's Steve Rothery of the band Marillion. Their brand new album, An Hour Before It's Dark, is now out. It's an amazing record. There'll be links to Marillion in the description of this video. Also links to the entire interview. If you enjoyed this, you want to see this whole thing, it's on our sister channel. Make sure you comment on our videos, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. I'm John Bowden. This is Rock History Music.